After Ben came back from Holland, he got himself a flat over here uh, by the lakes. And uh, that's the time uh, I met him and became very close friends to him. And uh, his daily routine could be that he took a walk around the lake or he came in to, uh, to this park. He came in over there and took a walk around the lake down here and passed the bridge and uh, feed the, the ducks and the swans. He was a person that had uh, illuminated uh, time uh, in some way. There was no night, no day, no... Uh, so he, when he slept, he slept, and when he was awake, he was awake, and it didn't really follow the normal rules for any kind of man or society. And, uh, and that, of course, uh, he could bump into situations where he needed help because he might be sleeping when we came to pick him up, and we had to be in quite a... at least a couple of hours before, sometimes. And we, we would be very unlucky sometimes, you know, he might sleep on stage. That was his night. Uh, it, it was very strange, actually. Uh, but we could also catch him up to till, up till the last years in a, in a mood where he was completely straight and he played uh, beautifully as, as if he was 35 years old. <laughs> First I met him, I just saw him and I thought he was so beautiful. He had a um, charisma or personality that you saw and then I found out that he had so many warm qualities and uh, that he was intelligent, that he was not a snob. You know, he liked the young people uh, and he liked the little man. And when people tried to show off, he looked right through it and uh, it didn't interest him. me 
maybe because I, I couldn't drink. I was more ordinary and I live an ordinary life. And he needed to, when he had had his big tools, he, he needed to be calmed down. And uh, then he knew that I would be there and uh, it's nice to come home and there's somebody who cares for you. It's not easy to be around somebody who's very drunk. But uh, when he got home and got to his bed, it was just to leave him there and let him sleep and hope that he was a little better the next day. But sometimes it wasn't. He had these periods where he were drinking for days. And uh, sometimes I could take it and sometimes I couldn't. was always playing music. He'd call me up and say, come on over, and I'd go over there, and he'd be having the, uh, t uh, his uh, tape recorder going or his record player going or something. And he had the uh, pipe into his bathroom, too, so that when he went to take a bath or to go and sit on a throne, he could still hear the music. He didn't miss a beat. And he would come back and... Uh, uh, and this music that he was listening to mainly was Duke Ellington, but there was a lot of classical music. Duke listened to classical music, so Ben Webster listened to classical music, too. And uh, he was always following Duke in uh, certain things all the way through the thing. And, he, of course, he was in touch with many of the members of Duke Ellington's orchestra, Ashby and uh, other people. Uh -huh. yeah. Uh, all right, all right. How you feel? Doing How cold. you feel? Yeah, it's a bit cold out here. Something yeah. else. Ben was always considered to be a Duke Ellington musician, even though he only spent less than four years with the band. I remember uh, Duke Ellington's band visiting Copenhagen in, uh, in the summer '71. Right, right, right. At the Tivoli Gardens. Yeah, the outdoor. The, that's country. right, the outdoor Tivoli Gardens, and uh, we played there. But during the break, you remember, we went to Ben's house. Yeah, right over here. Yeah, is that where it is? Yeah, in that right, direction. Right over here. We went to Ben's house, and uh, Ben had uh, black eyed peas yeah. and, and uh, <laughs> rice. And he had some, some beers for you. He had beers and, uh, you know, a few drinks, Goody and Paul Gonzalez and, and, and Russell Proko. And why Bill Davis, the organ player? Wild there. Bill Davis. Yeah. You know, and we all sit around and talk. Ben played the piano. Yeah, the stride piano. The stride piano. <laughs> and uh, he had a clarinet. A, a pro, I don't know whose clarinet that was. That was Ben's. That was Ben's clarinet, yeah, and then he was yeah. showing it to Pro. Yeah, and uh, you remember? Yeah, I have some photos of that. I can tell you when Mercer called him a couple of days earlier. Yeah. Ben was so excited. Right. So I picked him. The band came to town around two thirty or something like that. Yeah. And I picked Ben up ten o'clock, and he was ready. Oh, he yeah. had his hair dyed and his <laughs> shoes were shine. He was sitting just like you know where. Uh, a kid going to uh, his first prom dance. It was, yeah. it was fantastic. He was 63 at the time. He well, was still uh, acting like a little boy. Yeah, well, that, you know, the, the Duke Ellington, the, yeah, that, that was Ben's life. And now, Paul Gonzalez's uh, inspiration and master, Ben Webster will take the encore. <laughs> Ben loved when the Duke Ellington band came, of course. It was like his family. And uh, he would try to be straight when they came. And every time Ellington saw him, he, Ellington would say, when are you coming home? <laughs> 